Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you uh, in Python using PyCharm, I'm going to show you how to build like a quick appointment setter for a car dealership. Um, this is what this is. Uh, this application is about. Once again, it's the concepts that you're trying to grasp. If you get the concepts down, you can make anything. You know what I mean? So in this project, I'm just going to use an appointment. I'm going to create an appointment setter for a car dealership. So the first thing you want to do is you want to hit file and you want to create a new project. I've already done that. You're going to hit new project. It's going to take you to the create project um, tab. And then you're going to type in here, you're going to delete this and you're going to just put appointment setter or appointment card. You can put car dealer appointment setter. And you're going to hit the create button. What you do that is going to take you to like a blank screen, pretty much. What you're going to do is you're going to hit file and you're going to hit new. And you're going to uh, create a Python. It's going to give you the option to create a Python file. And you'll get this main.py. When it comes to Python, whenever you're creating a file, you always, no matter what you name it, you always want to put .py at the end. It just lets you know that's a Python file so you don't get it confused. First thing we're going to do is um, we're going to label what this is for comment. One of the things I've learned from reading these programming books, it's better to over comment than under comment, meaning that you want to be able to explain what your, pro what your project is, why it exists, or what you're trying to do with it. So we'll put a car... Appointment setter, appointment setter for a car dealer. Um, once again, this is not a real car dealership, so the names I use in here are not linked to any real car dealership. I'm just using uh, generic names uh, to create this program. So we will call this. Uh, dealership um, we're going to call it uh south uh down south car dealership we'll just say that because i live in the south Let's say down south uh down south vehicles first thing we're going to do or the next thing we're going to do we're going to initiate the print function Remember, the print function is pretty much executes the code. So uh, once once you execute the print function, it's going to pop down here in your terminal. Your terminal is pretty much the results of your what your what you've coded. That's the results of that in the uh, terminal area right here. So we're going to type. We're going to use a string. Remember, double quotation mark for strings. Um, or you can use single quotation marks. I just prefer double quotation marks. So we're going to say welcome. Welcome. Oh, come on, Don. You got to spell. There we go. Welcome. Sometimes my computer lags too. Welcome to down south vehicles. the best trucks in town sorry my camera's in the way there we go best trucks in town would you like we'll say best vehicles in town best Would you like to schedule a test drive? Question mark. And as you can see, we'll hit the play button right here. This initiates the print function or executes the code. And then that prints down here in the terminal. Now, another thing too, this yellow exclamation point will give you weak warnings. It will tell you like weak like things that are not going to like necessarily 
destroy your program or cause it. I shouldn't use destroy. Um, that's not the right terminology. Um, the exclamation point pretty much lets you know anything that's going to like, you know, cause like an issue in your pro. Not necessarily cause an issue in your program, but like it could be like a syntax error or not a syntax error. More like you know small things in the sense of like when it comes to like commenting. I'll use that like if you have like or. I wouldn't even say that. Say you have like some white space or whatever. White space is when you have unnecessary spacing. Um, you know, that can send out a exclamation point. Now, if it's red, if you get these red warning flags, which you'll see. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can show you real quick. Like if I take off this double quotation mark, you see how it's red? This is a, a major syntax error, meaning that like if I hit the play button to execute it, it will not run the program. The program will fail and it will tell you why. And it says um, ELL while scanning string literal. And it tells you the errors in line four and it lets you know right here's the issue. There's no double quotation mark. Close the string. Okay, next thing we're going to go to, we have print. Welcome to Down South Vehicles, best vehicles in town. Would you like to schedule a test drive? We're going to type in user underscore response one we'll hit equal, and then we're going to put input. And what this does is that it's giving the user the option to input their answer. Another thing too, we want to go back up here to test drive and we want to put yes. Or no answer. So they know how to, um, how to respond to the question. So now that we have that set up, we're going to move down to the next part of the, the um, program. This, we're going to use a conditional statement. We're going to use Boolean statements. Boolean pretty much is a true-false statement. So pretty much, depending on how the individual responds, if it lines up, to, however it lines up to the how the, uh, the program set up in the computer, it will take them down either one path or another. So I'll show you. First, we want to comment this part of the program. It's the set up. Um, it's the set. Let's see. This part of the program will be used to determine if client wants to schedule schedule test drive also too if you want to use if you're going to use multi-line um commenting you want to use quotation marks single quotation marks this is multi-line commenting you'll see in a minute test drive if client wants to schedule a test drive that's will be determined by using conditional conditional boolean statements another thing too uh, at the end you always want to make sure you close it with three quotation or uh, three single quotation marks because if you don't if you go to type in uh, your program it will not function so There we go. So we will say if we're going to use if else, if else statements. So if the user response, which is the client, one is equal to, this is double equal signs means that this lines up to this answer. If this lines up to the yes answer, 
that's the condition ending with the colon at the end because this is going to link the next part of the code to this uh, the top line if user underscore response one is equal equal to yes print great Say great. Um, what is your name? Else, this is the if they don't respond to the first question, if they don't if they don't type yes, then this is the alternative answer they'll get. Print. Thank you for your time. Take care. And I'll show you real quick. Also, another thing in Python or any kind of programming, you always want to save frequently. Because the last thing you want to do is mess up and not save. And you have a whole bunch of line of code. And then you have to start over. And it's just a hassle. So let's run this and see what it looks like. See what this exclamation point is. See, um, the thing that's cool about PyCharm what I like about it, like um, the exclamation points, for example, will let you know if you're following the PEP 8 guidelines. Pretty much this is like the guidelines on how to write good, clean, efficient code. Uh, and this has been designed by uh, multiple people in the Python community. So just hit this light bulb and then you'll hit remove trailing blank lines and then boom, we have a green check mark. Now we're going to hit the uh, play button. And oh, depending how long this video is, uh, I might have to make this in a couple uh, video part series. So um, bear with me. So as you see, it says down here, welcome to Down South Vehicles, best vehicles in town. Would you like to schedule a test drive? Question mark, yes or no answer. So we're gonna go down to our terminal. I'm gonna hit the yes, we're gonna hit enter. Then boom, it moves to the next section of the program. It says, great, what is your name? Now let's redo that. Let's say we hit the no uh, the no key. Boom! It says thank you for your time. Take care. So now we'll move to the next part of the program. Client gives name. This part of the program. The program. Client will give name and will ask for age and if they have a valid driver's license. And you may say, well, like, why does that matter about like, um, you know, they're going to come in anyways and show their driver's license if they have one or not anyways. But the reason why I include that is just saves time. Like, you don't want to get all this person's information, don't get their driver's license, and then you show up or they show up, and then it's like, oh, I don't have a driver's license. So you wasted their time and the dealer's time. So we'll hit File. You're going to hit Save. So User Response 2. Input Users. User will respond on with name. Okay, so now we're going to say user underscore two equals what well, user underscore response to equals, and then we're going to put input, and then we're going to put. And, uh, Close it with the parentheses. Now, whatever the user's name is, what they put, we're going to go down here and we're going to type in print. And then we're going to use string connotation. Uh, con, <laughs> I always have a hard time pronouncing that. Con connotation. And pretty much this is going to combine the string that we're writing with the user's response to automatically reply to their name. Excuse me. 
I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to jump out of that string right there. I'm going to put plus, and then we're going to type in user response to. So whatever that person types in their name as is going to say thank you so and so. Then we're going to hit comma, and comma pretty much the plus sign and the comma pretty much is just spacing the string that we write away from. Uh, e evenly away from the name. So we'll say thank you blank username. Then we're going to say we're going to create another string. Are you at least 18 years old? <clears throat> so let's hit file hit save all I want to hit the play button to see where we're at so far once again welcome to down south vehicles best vehicles in town would you like to schedule a test drive I'm going to type in yes and then it's going to ask what is your name and I'll just put a random name we'll just say James Sue. Enter. And it says, Thank you, James Sue. Are you at least 18 years old? Now, as you can see, there's an issue right here. You see, we don't have that even, we don't have a space between um, you and James. So we need to go up here. We need to correct that. So, what we're going to do is instead of using this plus sign, we're just going to use a comma space. I'm going to say, Thank you. And then we're going to put a period, or excuse me, and lowercase that R to a, I mean A to a lowercase A. Go up here, hit file, save all, then you're going to hit plus, or plus, I'm sorry, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning here, I'm a little tired. You're going to hit the place sign, or the run symbol. Welcome down south, vehicles, hit yes. Right, what is your name? We'll just say James Sue. Enter. It says, thank you, James Sue. Are you at least 18 years old? So you see, it took the user response. We used string, we used string connotation. It combined what we wrote right here. And it took their response and put it in the string, creating one single string. Now we're going to go to the next Boolean statement, or the new, the next if else conditional statement. Again, it's very important to leave comments because if someone ever uses this, they need to know why we're doing it this way and explain each section. This we are going to determine if client is at least or meets minimum, minimal or two, meets the age requirement using if else conditional Now, before we do that, we're going to ask for user response three, because we asked them a question, and now we need them to respond to that question. So we're going to do the same thing, input with parentheses, and then we're going to hit file save. You're going to see me doing this a lot, because it's very important to make sure your stuff's getting saved right. So user response three. Now we're going to go down here. We're going to do the if else statement. If user response three is equal to 18. Remember, use a colon because that connects the next line of code with the first line of code because we're asking, we're, we're comparing a response 
And we're saying if this if this person responds this way to the program, then the program will execute this way. So if user uh, response is equal to 18, print. Or excuse me, my mistake. We're not going to say equal equal to because say this person is like 45. They don't have to be equal to 18. They have to at least be at least 18 or older. I'm glad we caught that. So if user response is greater than or equal to 18, print, great. Or we're not going to say great. We're going to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, your, uh, thank you. You have met our age requirement. All right, period. Else. Else. If the user responds and says they are not 18, we will say print. I'm sorry, you do not meet our age requirement. And then we're going to hit. And then we're going to go down here and then we're going to hit quit. And this will terminate the program. Like if they do not respond, if they were if they respond and say they're not at least 18 or older, then we're gonna say, I'm sorry, you do not meet our age requirement. And then the quit function down there stops the program. So now we're gonna hit play. Um, it's getting a little late in this uh, video. I'm probably gonna end this video after this, and then we'll move, I'll make a part two video. Um, probably later on today. So well, welcome to Down South Vehicles, best vehicles in town. Would you like to schedule a test drive? We're going to hit yes. It says, great. What is your name? We'll say James Sue. Thank you, James Sue. Are you at least 18 years old? Or excuse me, you know, we're going to change that. I'm sorry. I messed up. We're going to say, we're going to, instead of saying, are you at least 18 years old? We're going to say, we're going to go up here. We're going to terminate this program. We're going to stop this program. I'm sorry about that. We're going to type in, what is your age? Okay, now we're going to restart it. I'm going to say, go through the whole process again, yes. What is your name? James Sue. Thank you, James Sue. What is your age? And we'll say, we'll say 18. Enter. It says, thank you. You have met our age requirement. So because we typed in the age the minimum age it says thank you. you uh, we've you've met the age requirement, so now we're able to move on to the next part of the program. Now let's let's test this. Let's say let's restart the program again. Let's say uh, yes, James Sue. Let's say we're forty five. Let's put forty five. Enter. It says thank you. You have met our age requirement because remember we use the greater than or equal to sign. So this is literally saying remember. The greater than equal to sign in math when we were in math class in high school or middle school, it's the same concept. If the user is if the user if the input if the number the user puts in is greater than or equal to 18, then do this, you know. So um now that we see that the minimum works, the minimum age requirement works, and if you're older than the minimum age, that works. Let's see what happens if I put an age in that's not 18. So let's hit the play button. Yes. Whoops, sorry. Great. What is your name? James Sue. Thank you, James Sue. What is your age? Now we're going to say 15. Says, I'm sorry you do not meet our age requirement. And then here we'll put in here uh, so they know. We'll put must. 18 years old. 
So, we'll put you must be 18 years old. So let's try that again. I just want you to see it. I, I like spelling it out because you don't want to just assume people know. You know, um, so hit yes. What is your age? Or what is your name? James. Sue. Thank you, James. What is your age? We'll say 14. It says, I'm sorry, you did not meet our age requirement. You must be 18 years old. So this is what we're at in our program so far. I'm going to end this video now, and I will make the part two video probably within maybe later today, maybe tomorrow, depending how my schedule works out. I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, any concerns, please feel free to comment. Um, if you have been doing this for a while and you see some things that need to be um, critiqued in my coding, please respond. I'm open to uh, criticism, constructive criticism. It's always, it helps me grow. So um, thank you. If you like my video, like, share, subscribe.